Hello everyone, this is Damon with PixNub Software. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use CSV file data to auto-replace text, resize text, force a different background file per image, and override the file name. Now you don't have to do all of these options, but I'm just going to show all these in this video. So I just loaded the CSV file here. You need to hit load and then you grab your file and it will be in there, it'll say loaded. And then this is the actual file that I loaded. You can create these in any spreadsheet program. Um, I'm using OpenOffice right now. It's a free spreadsheet pro program, or actually it's um, LibreOffice. Liber it's a spin-off of OpenOffice, um, but it is free. You can find that online. You can also use Excel. You just need to make sure you save the file in a CSV file format. That stands for comma separated value. So it's going to separate um, all of the fields in your um, spreadsheet with a comma. And then each row is with a hard return. So the one thing is you cannot have commas inside of your text fields because that will throw off um, the rows and columns. So what we're going to do here is replace text, resize text, um, use a custom file name, and specify the background per image. This is pretty simple to do. Um, the first column, this column here, that has to be the image names for your source files. So in, in this case, the green screen images that we have, it's just the image names. It does not have to have the file extension although it can have the file extension. However, it is case sensitive, so make sure if your files are capital IMG, then they're capital IMG in this spreadsheet. And the first, um, the A1 cell, you leave that blank because the first um, row, this is our header row, and we don't need a header row um, for the source files. Now just make sure that the source files are in this first column. That's very important. Other than that, the columns do not have to be in any specified order whatsoever. And you don't have to use as many columns as I have here. You just use whatever you need to use for what it is you're trying to do. And there are specific columns that it will look for with a, a certain name. Um, for instance, the resizing columns, the new name, and the background file. Any other columns, it will assume those are names of layers in your um, PSD template. So in this case, we've got a layer in our PSD template called first name, a layer called last name, a layer called number, and a layer called position. You don't have to have as many as I can do here, you can have only one layer that you're renaming, or you can have a hundred, it really doesn't matter. But very, very important, make sure that these column headers are the exact same names as the um, layer names in your PSD template that you're replacing the text for, and this is case sensitive. And your names may not be the same as my name, so if you have a layer in your template that's the first name of um, if it's a sports template, for example, yours might not be called first name with capital F, capital N. It could just be called first, or it could be called anything. Just make sure these names match what your template names are. So what it's going to do is it's, when it runs, it'll look for a specific image. And in this case, if it finds this image name, it's going to look for a layer called first name and replace the text with David. It will find a layer called last name and replace that with text Blake. Same for number and same for position. If you have any of these fields empty, it will just skip that so you don't have to replace the text for every image. You just fill in what you need to fill in. If you choose to resize the text as far as doing auto text sizing, this field has to be called resize dash and then the name of your layer and so when chroma key lab runs it's going to look for any fields that are called resize dash and then it's going to match this name to your layer name and so in this case resize dash first name it's going to resize text in the layer that's called first name now this is optional if you 
change the text or if you're replacing the text, you don't have to resize. But if you do, just make sure that you have this formatted correctly. And then there are six different resize methods. Um, the most common two you'll use is scale XC and scale XL. And what the scale is, is it's scaling the text in the X direction, that's horizontally, and the C is for centered, and the L is for left. So if your text is left justified, you want to use the L. If it's center justified, you'll want to use the C. And the reason I got two different ones here is I'm using two different backgrounds. Now this is another option you have in the CSV files, is you have the option to specify a background file per image. And what that's going to do, it's going to look in this same background folder and look for a file with the name that's in your template. So all of the files, or the background files, have to be in the folder that you are using here. If you don't have, or if you have empty cells, it's going to use the default background that you have selected. So in this case, if we have the Friday Night Lights background selected in inside of Chroma Key Lab, we don't actually have to fill those in. We would just need to put in the background files that were different from the default. New file name, this is another option. You don't have to use it, but if you do, it's going to override this file naming here. However you have selected the name, and it's gonna override that with the specific text in this field don't put the extension in, it'll automatically add the extension for you. The other things that CSV can do, which I'm not gonna show in this video, you can run pre and post actions per image based on data in the spreadsheet, which gives you a whole bunch of different workflow customizations you can do, but that, that's a whole nother video on its own, so I'll show that later. And just to recap, only use what you need. I did quite a bit here, but you may only have one or two layers that you want to replace the text, no resizing and no renaming or separate backgrounds. Um, so just use what you need. And it's, the setup is actually pretty simple. Um, so I'm gonna now go into here. Now that I've already loaded it, I'm going to run. I've got it, so it's gonna pause after it's completed just so we can look at it. Okay, so we're paused. You can see it replaced the text, all four of these text layers. And you see our layer names here, first name, last name, position, and number. Those match what was in this template. It's also rescaled the text on the X. So this um, last name only had four letters, so it actually widened the text. Same with the first name. And as we go to the next one, you'll see that um, with a different amount of letters in the last name, it's going to maintain a similar looking poster because it's going to rescale that text accordingly. You can see with this name with six letters, the letters are not um, stretched out as much, but it still fits it into the template pretty nice. And the same with the first name. I'm only doing three images for this example. In this one, we're going to use a different background as specified in the um, CSV. So now this is a completely different background, but I do have the um, layers named the same. So that's important if you get more than one template and you want to run them together, just make sure that the layers that you want to replace text in are the um, same name. And also, you don't have to um, have all of the same layers, like one template can be um, missing one. For example, this template does not have a position layer. So if you look in here, we've got this position. And so for this one, um, the position was defensive end or, or DE, but our template did not have a position layer. And if that happens, because you may not 
have your template set up the same way every time and that's fine it's just not going to replace that text it's not going to throw an error it's just going to move on to the next item so anyway and you can see that this text it auto fit this in this is a 10 letter name and it automatically fit that in the template now you will want to go watch the other video when I show how to set up your PSD templates because you can't just throw any template you have at this and expect it to work correctly without setting it up correctly ahead of time. It's pretty easy to do, but you will want to watch that video to make sure you have your text layers set up so that, so that they will work properly with the text replacement and text scaling. I'll just continue here. The last thing I will show you, I go into now I got a bunch of them here. I've run this a bunch of times, but um nonetheless you can see that um it replaces the um text in the layer with the text that we or the file name with the new file name. Since I've run this multiple times, is I guess a good thing to point this out. If you're running multiple times and you start over and do it again, the next time it's not going to overwrite your image. It's going to put an extension on it. So the first time I ran this, benjaminmorgan.jpg, the next time it called it benjaminmorgan underscore 002, and so on. And the reason we have multiples is because I messed this video up a few times in the middle of recording and it took me four tries to get it right. Anyway, hope that answers your questions on how to use the CSV data to replace um, the text and resize it in your images. Also be sure to watch the next video in this series which will show how to use the CSV files to um, automatically use different actions per image because that's pretty powerful as well. Thanks for watching and if you're interested at Chroma interested in Chroma Key Lab, please be sure to visit our website that is pixnub.com.